Hi YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art. I'm going to continue reading from Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution, John Goffman and Arthur Tamplin's book. We are on Chapter 5, page 56. The title of the chapter is Lip Service to Public Health. So let me slip on my reading glasses. And let's get, on, get it going. Okay. We're on page 56, the first chap, the first uh, paragraph. And the Atomic Energy Commissioners heard plenty about the radioactive iodine contamination of Utah milk. And that is why in the spring of 1963, they felt themselves to be on, they felt themselves to be on the hot seat. They simply had no good answers. In retrospect, one wonders why anyone expected magic from the AEC commissioners. Clearly, if atmospheric nuclear explosive tests spew radioactivity around the landscape, and if someone measures for such radioactivity, Houdini himself couldn't have made the radioactivity disappear. If no one knows enough to measure, which was the case in the earlier years, it is possible to slip by unnoticed. In 1962, it was too late for that system of deception. The last thing anyone dreamed of was stopping atmospheric nuclear tests. And, the, and certainly, the Atomic Energy Commission and the Department of Defense were thoroughly opposed to this solution. Oh my God, really? <clears throat> Something else must be done. In America, we have the time-honored approach to nasty problems that refuse to remain submerged. Let me read that again. In America, we have a time-honored approach to nasty problems that refuse to remain submerged. We announce with great solemnity and due publicity that we shall study this grave problem. So the AEC decided to approach the two nuclear explosive laboratories, Los Alamos and Livermore, about doing something to get the commissioners off the uncomfortable hot seat. Their reasoning was straightforward. Nuclear explosives are designed and tested either by the Los Alamos laboratory or the Livermore laboratory. <coughs> nuclear explosive tests get AEC commissioners in trouble with an indignant, fearful public. Perhaps in a group of biologists, perhaps if a group of biologists were working with nuclear explosive designers, either less radioactivity would be released from the explosions or the test would be done completely differently. In any event, a good publicity re release in any event, a good publicity release that the problem was receiving serious attention would certainly help some. <clears throat> the Los Alamos Laboratory declined to offer to offer to undertake the new responsibility. Dr. John Foster, then director of the Lawrence Radiation Laboratory at Livermore, was approached by the, I, the AEC with a request to consider setting up a biomedical program in association with his nuclear explosives laboratory for the purpose of studying the grave problem of fallout from such tests. John Foster, we got to remember that guy's name. <clears throat> he called us to ask for an opinion concerning the wisdom and necessity of setting up a biomedical program. Was such a program necessary? Could it make it could it make a national contribution? Who would be available to do the work if it were to be done? Thorny questions concerning radioactive fallout. Both of us agreed that radioactive fallout from weapons testing and so-called peaceful nuclear explosives, as well as other atomic energy activities, was indeed grave concern. There were many unanswered questions, such as who is getting exposed to how much radiation and what precisely were the effects to be anticipated? And could anything be done to make all this safer? 
Some 19 laboratories were already studying biological effects of radiation and fallout and related subjects under the AEC auspices. Why weren't they providing all the answers that were required? Why set up still another biomedical laboratory to study the radioactive radiation hazard problem? On careful thought, we decided it was desirable to have one laboratory consider, in a broad overall manner, the impact upon life and society of nuclear programs, from the nuclear source, such as the explosive itself, all the way through air, water, soil, food chains into man, and the ultimate effect upon man and other members of the biosphere. Indeed, we not only thought it was desirable, but mandatory, after we realized that no one was taking a broad view of the impact of Atomic Energy Commission activities that spewed radioactivity around various parts of the world's landscape. But there were several very thorny problems. The past record of the Atomic Energy Commission was anything but encouraging with respect to objectivity concerning the health hazards of its program. Why should one honestly ex why should one expect honesty and objectivity to arise suddenly? What if one did take this assignment seriously and try to find out the true impact of man's radioactivity release from various AEC programs? And what if the results indicated that the best thing to do would be to cancel those nuclear programs? Could the Atomic Energy Commission be counted upon to tolerate such thwarts to its promotional efforts just because of health hazards? Would we be allowed to tell the truth about whatever hazards we discovered? Or might the frequently used security classification secret be slapped on so the unsuspecting public would be none the wiser? That's where we're at today, folks. <clears throat> Besides, the credibility of the Atomic Energy Commission was so low in the eyes of the biological scientific community that it hardly seemed likely that anyone would seriously believe results reported from the AEC supported laboratory, even a new one, there being so little reason to have ever believed AEC safety pronouncements in the past. Wow. We're paying for this. Billions of our own tax dollars going for these pack of liars. I'm, uh, it's stunning that we can't stop them. <clears throat> okay. <sighs> A new program to study effects of radioactivity. Dr. Foster was most reassuring of all these concerns. This time he felt the AEC was in real trouble and that they were prepared to turn over a new leaf with respect to public responsibility. And this was a nationally important problem. Besides, if the work were done at the Lawrence Radiation Laboratory of the University of California, the prestige of the university would be behind the work and would, would also protect the researchers from being demolished by the AEC even if the AEC were to be inclined to be harsh about release of the truth concerning radiation hazards. One thing the biological researchers could count on, he said, was that the radiation laboratory, that the Lawrence Radiation Laboratory would back them to the hilt under any pressure, and this would ensure that the problems involved would receive a full, honest, open airing, let the chips fall where they may. Ha! Huh. <clears throat> Wistfully, we now realize our question should have been, will you love me in September as you do in May? Uh, for some reason, we didn't ask that, being gullible, trusting, or incredibly naive. So finally, after much debate and soul-searching, we agreed to plan a program of study for the Lawrence Radiation Laboratory at Livermore under the awesome title, 
a program to investigate the effects of release of radiation and radioactivity upon the biosphere, particularly upon man. Wow. And perhaps foolishly, because the issues for humans seem to be important, we, we both agreed to give up what we were doing to establish the study of program. The Atomic Energy Commission was most eager, agreeing to essentially every stipulation in the program outlined. A meeting was hastily arranged in Washington to finalize the establishment of the new biomedical program at Lawrence Radiation Laboratory at Livermore. Chairman Seaborg and Con Commissioner Lee Hay Hayworth attended on the part of the commissioners. Numerous members of the AEC uh, officialdom also attended, all enthusiastic about the new program to evaluate the impact of various AEC programs upon man and other of his e ecosystem. One of us, Goffman, still skeptical with the memories of the past AEC actions concerning biological hazards, felt the last clarification was worthwhile. He said, we think this program is important, worthwhile, and essential if atomic energy development is to remain or to be consistent with the safety and welfare of the public. What he asked would be the attitude of the AEC if the development if the developing studies indicated any particular program of the AEC were inimical to the health interests of the U.S. citizens. We indicated we wouldn't consider initiation of a program unless we were absolutely assured that no censorship, no suppression of biological hazard reports, no interference with criticism of proposed AEC ventures would be forthcoming. Chairman Seaborg and Commissioner Hayworth responded quickly and forthrightly. All we want is for you to tell the truth about biological and medical hazards. You need have no fear that there would ever be any interference with the release of the truth. The agreements were qu quickly reached to establish I'm sorry. The agreements were quickly reached to establish uh, to establish the program. Indeed, I wonder if that's the right thing. Yeah. <coughs> I'm sorry, you guys. Indeed, it is doubtful that any new program sponsored by the AEC ever got approved so rapidly as this one. A clear reflection of the urgency felt by the Atomic Energy Commission to demonstrate responsiveness to the issue of public health and safety, especially after the grand blunders in Utah during 1962. And immediately the AEC issued the following promising news release to newspapers across the country. Uh, a comprehensive, long-range program to explore the greater breadth and depth of sources of man-made environmental radioactivity and the effects upon plants, animals, and human beings was announced today by the Atomic Energy Commission. This is dated Friday, May 31, 1963. Advanced for release after 7 a.m. Okay. The program will be built up over a long over a period of time as scientists become available to fill the developing needs for specific talents the livermore studies will place special emphasis on early fallout that fallout which follows a nuclear detonation within hours or days the studies will become an integral part oh lord i'm sorry you guys the studies will become an integral part of the commissioner, Commission's biomedical research program and will be closely coordinated with the AEC-sponsored research being conducted at many other laboratories throughout the nation. The broad studies of the worldwide fallout and radiation effects on living systems going on elsewhere will be continued. The Commission has recognized the need for a central group which would plan and conduct studies of environmental co contamination due to the release of radioactivity from nuclear detonations 
conducted for peaceful or military purposes. At the request of the Commission, a program has been outlined and is being established at its Livermore, California site operated by the University of California Lawrence Radiation Laboratory. During fiscal year 1964, it is estimated that the operating cost will be about $2 million. Dr. John S. Foster, Jr., Director of the Livermore Laboratory, has sponsored Dr. John W. Goffman to head a new program and to be Associate Director of the Laboratory. Dr. Goffman is a professor of medical physics in the Donner Laboratory on the University of California, Berkeley's campus. The presence at Livermore of scientists knowledgeable in the ways of man-made radiation is generated and released, plus the concentration of pertinent facilities make Livermore unusually suitable for assessing the implications of the broad range of possible conditions under which such releases might occur. Included will be studies of short-lived and long-lived fission products and neutron-induced activity with particular emphasis on their distribution and effects of living materials. In particular, the laboratory will investigate the entire chain of events leading to radiation exposure of human beings which might follow. One of the early studies cont contemplated will be concerned with the short-lived fission product of iodine-131. Biological and medical research will now be closely integrated with existing physical science programs at the laboratory, such as, for example, the Plowshare program, in which nuclear explosives are being developed for huge earth-moving projects, mining operations, etc. The existing highly developed computer facilities at Livermore will be vital aid to the continuing coalition of the storehouse of research information already available. That's the end of the press release. One veteran observer of the government scene, a bit hardened by experience, reacted to this AEC news release almost immediately. I.F. Stone of his bi-weekly of June 24, 1963 wrote, the Lawrence Radiation Laboratory and the Atomic Energy Commission have just announced establishment of a long-range program to study the effects of radioactivity on man. The, radiation, the Lawrence Radiation Laboratory is the stronghold of Dr. Edward Teller, the father of the hydrogen bomb. And so shortly we can expect to hear an announcement from the Lawrence Laboratory that radio, radio iodine is good for babies. <laughs> this cynicism reflected such a remark was typical of opinions prevalent at that time concerning the credibility of the Atomic Energy Commission concerning health matters. We of the Lawrence Lab's new biomedical division winced a little at this remark. We knew it meant our job was going to be harder than ever since people were likely to be unbelieving of any statement made by the AEC supported laboratory. But we knew the problems involved were of desperate importance to the health and welfare of the country and indeed for human beings in general. And we were determined to do a first rate job to evaluate the true potential hazards realistically and honestly. However, we did not know that Mr. Stone appreciated far better than we did the difficulty we would be getting, we would have getting the truth to the public without repression. Hmm. As we saw the problem, there were four essential aspects. One, learning all about the major AEC programs that could be expected to be a major source of release of radiation and radioactivity and whether constructive suggestions could be made for minimizing radioactivity release at the source. Among these programs were nuclear weapon testing, peaceful nuclear explosives and so-called plowshare program, nuclear reactors for power generation in spaceflight, and radioisotopes for industry and medical use. Two, learning in a systematic manner how radioactive pollution would distribute themselves from nuclear events in the air, water, 
and air, water, soil, and finally the foodstuffs ultimately consumed by man. Oh man, we're going on 20 minutes. So, I think I am going to try to audit this and cut it out a little bit. So, okay, you guys, um, I'll talk to you then tomorrow night. Uh, I'll read a little bit more. And we're leaving off on page 62 uh, of chapter 5. And I'll talk to you later. Sweet dreams. Bye. Okay, we're going to do that again. One, two, three. Okay, you guys, I'm going to end here. Uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow night. We're on page 62. And of chapter 5 we're making headway so make an effort not to let this get to you so put your courage feet on things aren't as hard as they look it's not going to happen overnight but it's our reality and this information is going to arm us so ciao you guys take care sweet dreams